जननी शारदा देवी राम कृष्ण जगद्गु पादपद्मे तयो श्रीवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु the question to others is first visit and first question he asks is i have a question is it good to sacrifice animals before a deity it certainly involves killing this we discussed in the last class in detail how the evolution of the jiva begins when we bring in into our normal nature of animalhood when we bring the divine into picture our animalhood cannot be destroyed by any means hmm. the killing tendency the harming tendency remains whatever we do so ana divine is brought into the in between to slowly cling to the divine and get rid of the animalhood so this is the whole thing that we see happening in our uh, nature the transformation now the next the shri ram krishna says i see god in everything nowadays that is when i am seeing god in that state if anybody dies i feel happy and consoled oh it is body is falling off the inner divinity inner divine being is there as it is unchanged this is the essence of the second chapter of bhagavad gita nainam chindanti shastrani nainam dhati pavaka nothing it is indestructible inner self body alone falls off the ultimate reality that's what shri ram krishna is telling that when i see you are telling calling it death a day that killing it looks like killing then one day we transcend all attitudes towards the world and our killing stops forever and we transcend the nature and go beyond to the eternal existence of portion of bliss peace love absolute so this hmm after that shri ram krishna is telling one should not reason too much it is enough if one loves the lotus feet of mother see people are throughout even after they enter into spiritual life even with the total idea oneself given to the ideal of god realization still man goes on reasoning every moment will this is right this is right or wrong uh, and i i am doing like this i am doing like that i am do, doing sadhana i am do, no, not able to control my that instead of revolving around god we will be revolving from morning till night around myself hmm. from um, my childhood i had this nature that nature this way that way i i i i am revolving in sadhana also i am doing japa i am doing dhyana it is i am centered i am revolving around myself more than revolving around the god tapur shri ramkrishna is telling oh don't reason much the moment reasoning comes that i is becoming predominant and whole thoughts moves around me is for moving around god now shri ram krishna is telling that one should not reason too much the, it is enough if one loves the lotus feet of mother love is manifestation of the inner heart that is the self is flowing out as love reasoning is a part of nature 
Buddhi itself is a part of nature. Heart is not a part of nature. It doesn't come within the 24 cosmic principles with which this universe is formed. So here we see uh, your own being flowing independent of reasoning. You are flowing into God. Too much reasoning throws the mind into confusion. Shabdaranyam, Mahajalam, Chitta Brahmana Karanam, Vyakaranda says. It is the reasoning takes you and make you enter into Maharanya, great uh, deep woods we are entering into. We cannot know the if you once enter into a forest, it coming out is very difficult. Go about 10 or 12 kilometers inside walk, while coming out one tree, this way, that way, in Madhya Pradesh, miles and miles, hundreds of miles, there is forests, everywhere forest, forest. Once you enter it, to come out, if you miss your path, even in Himalayas, if you miss your path, you will not be able to come back to the main road at all. It takes many, many days. Go on walking, 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 spending. Like that, if you enter into Maharanya, uh, you will get lost in such a way that how to come out you will not know. That is where the reason is going to take man. Too much of reasoning throws the mind into confusion. You get clear water if you drink from the surface of a pool. Put your hand deeper and stir the, stir the water. It becomes muddy. Therefore, pray to God for devotion. In path of jnana, there is tearing away from the world, tearing away from the bodily existence. It begins with the denial of body. I am not body. This world is a maya, it is a delusion, it is not there. This attitude, this understanding is there. Uh, whereas in bhakti yoga, in devotion, in love of God, it is acceptance and transcendence. Here in jnana yoga, rejection and transcendence. To transcend the nature, uh, here accept, I accept and go beyond. Here, in case of path of bhakti, in love of God, I forget, I transcend naturally without any tearing away. I am there with everyone, I am talking to everyone, doing all my duties, everything is going on, but my heart is fixed at the feet of God. Body and mind are working in the world. The heart is given slowly, its buoyancy. It lifts me from the samsara and takes me beyond. So this simple, easiest and for all people and there is no qualification required in the path of but to acquire that love of God, to acquire that devotion, is very difficult. Sri Ramakrishna gives the four formulas singing the names and glories of God, now and then entering into solitude, satsanga and intense prayer. These four will awaken the devotion, intense prayer. Here Sri Ramakrishna is coming again to the intense prayer. <coughs> Put your hand to the deeper waters and still it becomes muddy. Therefore I say, pray to God for devotion. Give me devotion. Mm. There is no confusion. There is only faith leading, love pouring out from the heart. Behind Dhruva's devotion, there was desire. He practiced austerities to gain his father's kingdom. But Prahlada's love for God was motiveless, a love that sought no return. Hmm. Both are devotion. 
again he differentiates in the devotion uh, the devotion to god krishna himself says four types of people worship me artho um, arthaarthi artho the one who is suffering artho arthaarthi one who is after money uh, jignasu one wants to know what god is jignasu and gnani all the four types the one who is after the money and for removing the suffering that is undergoing the other two are slightly higher is the free from any desires desire for knowing god is not a desire and one who has known loving god is not at all it doesn't come into the picture at all so he is the earth jignasu and uh, the gnani do not come into the picture but the other two come into the picture that is artha and arthaarthi these two are this those people who have an intention behind what they are going to god that is their greatness so these two uh, same devotion same thing but they are seeking something behind god does give and satisfy them and take beyond also and the other two is the jignasu and gnani they are gnani is eternally one with god hmm. uh, jignasu is on the way to know god the gnani has already known and he is one with god at all times so he differentiates between the motivated uh, love devotion to god and without motivation pralada's love for god was motiveless a devotee how can one realize god then comes the picture see how the uh, understanding total acceptance god can be realized how that again and again again and again in whatever we dwell uh if from that we acquire that nature we acquire that understanding if something projects us see we have so many desires to fulfill in the world the materialism materialism and materialistic tendencies in us and materialism outside match each other they capture me because i have that within me uh, i want to enjoy i want to possess i want to be great i want power and authority in the world i want status all these things and it is available in the front of me others are enjoying these things so this awakens in me i see i it similarly another aspect of my existence is divine peaceful full of bliss that is there when such such similar circumstances come similar atmosphere is given this awakens hmm when people are constantly talking about the realization of freedom total freedom from nature forever all this when they talk and see the this people person has attained that person all saints life if you go through you see how they transcended the nature and entered into the transcendental attained god uh, became immortal that again and again when it comes to how oh, it is there it is here i can i to he has attained i to can attain that slowly that awakening comes from within awakening we are awake to the materialism and we are desire it similarly we get awakened to the spiritual existence and we seek it so here the question the question depicts that seeking hmm. it is not a casual enquiry hmm. how can one realize god a devotee a devotee is asking hmm. not a casual enquirer how can one realize god master 
through that kind of love. But one must force one's demand on God. One should be able to say, O oh God, wilt thou not reveal thyself to me? I will cut my throat with a knife. This is Tamas, Tamas of Bhakti. Devotee, can one see God? Hmm. Means uh, to the extreme, that is, how much of longing, how much of love, how much of sacrifice must be there that I am unable to bear the separation from God. The I will cut my throat with a knife uh, doesn't mean that I am going to cut the throat, but here it depicts that I am unable to bear the separation from God to that extent when it comes. That is, I am forcing my demand. That is, long, I am no more I can live without you. I am no, unable to live without you. A day in, in one life or the other, one day or the other, we come to that state wherein we are not able to live. Nothing of this world, the all the glories of the world, all the enjoyments of the world are kept in front of me, offered in front of a jiva. It doesn't want, no, to that. I want to transcend and go. That intense longing, giving oneself entirely to the Divine and seeking the Divine does come in one life or other when the Jiva transcends and returns back to the Source. <clears throat> this is the Tamas of Bhakti. Means, Tamas when we say it is grossified concrete thing. Uh, it is flowing like water, uh, restlessly. Um, it is tamas, it is rajas of bhakti. It is sattva of bhakti. Devotee, one can, can one see God, Master? Yes, surely. One can see both aspects of God, God with form and without form. This aspect is there, especially in Hinduism, of the personal and the impersonal aspect of God, the eternal, unchanging, eternal reality, eternal reality, infinite, timeless, spaceless, law, cause and, cause and effectless reality that doesn't change that absolute, its manifestation as universe and the same consciousness pervading it, governing it as the lord of the universe. So, personal aspect is the manifestation of the impersonal absolute. So, impersonal, formless, nirguna, nirakara is one aspect of God. Innumerable are its manifestations, the saguna sakara, according to the needs according to the nature's multiplicity. This world is a multifarious world and so many forces have to work to manage, to keep the patterns in order. Now you see the plantain tree giving only plantain fruit and giving birth to new plantain. Similarly, mango. Mango pattern is maintained in nature. Every life is maintained in nature. All this maintenance and continuity of the flow is maintained by so many forces working in the nature and each force is the manifestation of the absolute, un the unlimited power of the absolute existence, the Shakti. So this, according to Shakti, there is appears to be one becoming many and appearing many for many devatas which we worship are the manifestations of this one reality the personal that is why Sri Ramakrishna is telling uh, yes surely one can see both aspects of God God with form and without form one can see God 
with form, the embodiment of spirit. Again, God can be directly pursued in man with tangible form, Rupa, Saguna Saka. Seeing an incarnation of God is same as seeing God himself. God is born on earth as many as man in every age. Yuge Yuge. <coughs> the person who is asking is asking Sri Ram Krishna. And he is talking to God. He is seeing God. He is interacting with God. But he doesn't know. Sri Ram Krishna says when Rama came into on this world, in this world, then only 12 people, 12 sages knew he is the incarnation of God. For all others, he was a great, there is no match of him in this world. And he is the son of Dasharatha, a great personality which is matchless. But a few alone know God has taken that form and came. Like that, this uh, other also is talking to Sri Ramakrishna. And he is not able, he is, doesn't know that he is talking directly to God. Hmm. That Sri Ramakrishna is just uh, introducing himself as if, uh, don't worry my child, I have come for this fulfillment of the every jiva. Hmm. God can be one can see God with form, the embodiment of spirit. Again, God can be directly perceived in a man with tangible form. That is, when, because I am not able to transcend and go beyond, I cannot know what is beyond the relative existence, because it is timeless, spaceless existence, cannot be conceived by mind. It cannot be understood by the intellect, buddhi. Senses can never perceive. So how to know that? How to stretch ourselves beyond? And so when man is he unable to but seeks, longs to see or seeks help, then God has to, because I cannot raise, God comes down to fulfill that need of the jiva in human form. Then he takes, a, leaves behind a leela to contemplate upon and go back to the source. Now, uh, Ramanuja Acharya explains this avatara as how the inaccessible becomes down to the human level, to take the human on uh, to that level of understanding God. It is like elephant. The Mahut himself cannot climb on the elephant. So he, he wants the elephant to come down. So to take the Mahut himself, who is behind the elephant, making it, uh, how much of intimacy, how much of training, how much of this one sacrifice he has done to bring the elephant. Now he orders the elephant, oh, I cannot climb upon you, you come down. The elephant sits on the ground. Then also man cannot climb. The elephant stretches its trunk behind. He steps on the trunk and then climbs on the back. So this elephant coming down to the to the level of human and assisting him to climb up, he calls as avatara, incarnation. So this incarnation, see, because whether it is the elephant is sitting down or standing up, whether God has come down in human form or existing in the in its own glory and greatness, it is the same. If you have seen avatara, you have seen God. God can be realized in five ways. There is the transcendental reality, beyond everything, the source, the Brahman, 
then they, as the immanent uh, reality, God has become all this universe and all that exists here in humanity as Lord of the universe, who is controlling, pervading the universe, who governs the entire universe, and like as the Antaryamin, the indweller in all beings, and as the Avatara, God coming down in human form and appearing on this in this world. So it can be God can realize five ways. Whatever way you realize you are beyond nature and ever free from all bondages and suffering. Nature, the mukti, the concept of mukti, mukti from what? From nature. We are in the prison of, of nature. Everything regarding my situations of life, my happiness and joys and sorrows of life, everything is given by, provided by nature. According to though according to my own karma, it's all controlled by nature. I cannot escape. I cannot run away. Uh, inevitably, I am there, be subjected to all this, and now I I want release from that prison house of nature. I want to go beyond. There it comes into picture, the sadhana devotion. Mm -hmm. The God with form, God without form. Uh, seeing an incarnation of God is the same as seeing God Himself. Sri Ramakrishna is sitting. The Absolute has uh, is appearing in His friend as the in his humble human form. He is sitting in front of the devotees and talking to them. Hmm. God is born on this earth as man in every age. Hmm. Time to the age we decide by the change of season. Season we do in every season. If I say seasons are specific, the change of weather conditions create the season. Like that dharma and adharma variations create the age. Every age, when we say every Satyuga and all these Dushtreta, Dwapara, Kali, all these Yugas are the, just like season is changing, the Dharma and Adharma constantly changes. This change that is coming over again and again in a cyclic order. Uh, and every age, every season as if God appears. Because it is changing. When, when it is changing, there is a need because the old tendencies are con trying to continue and new forces are going to act to bring about a harmony in this God appears. So this God appearing on the earth is called Dharma Samsthapana and it includes the release of Thousands of jivas, innumerable jivas pass holding on to that small frame which appears on this earth. Niranjanam nityam anantarupam bhaktanukampa dhritavikraham vai Ishavataram Parameshamidyam Tam Ramakrishnam Shirasana Mamah